Hello, welcome back to another Spider-Man related video, as the past couple months have been. Uh, this is a head sculpt I received from RDJ Customs, there'll be a link in the description to this. Very quick rundown, I uh, primed this and then I went and painted it. You can see I just wedged it on the end of a permanent marker. And uh, I didn't record any of the process of painting faces, it's very difficult to get on camera, like trying to keep it in front of the camera while you're painting. But here's an up close of just the paint job I've done. Um, if you want a video of that in the future, I will record one. But as you can tell, this is going to be Spider-Punk. A uh, bit of a rushed video, I didn't realise how quickly I'd started this uh, originally. But first thing I'm going to do, remove the head, and obviously the custom heads don't have a ball joint socketed into them. Uh, they're designed so you can put blue tack or your own joint, or like hot glue with cling film. There's many different ways you can do this. I, however, 3D modeled and 3D printed a neck joint that fits onto the Marvel Legends. Because I've had this one quite a while, it's been sat in the sun, it's not like the perfect fit, but I fixed this up with just a little bit of super glue in it. And this just so happens to be the perfect diameter to fit into the socket of the custom head. So I'm going to super glue it into place, which you can see there. There's still enough gap to allow flex for it to actually uh, bend to click on and off, which you can see makes for a very nice just pop fit. And it works exactly the same as most Marvel Legends joints would. Means so you get a good range, the only range like you kind of miss out on is upwards, but he still looks up quite a bit. And you're going to have that issue just with the amount of hair he's got. Uh, worth pointing out, the sculpt itself was done by uh, a guy called Oribus. I think it's Oribus? Oribus? On 22 on Instagram. Uh, again, his link will be in the description as well. Um, I didn't buy it from him, I bought it from RDJ Customs. Uh, which, again, you can get from him, but just want to credit the original artist of the sculpt itself. In regards to custom, uh, or customising this, first thing I want to do, this is the only like actual hardware that I want to change. Hardware? Would you call it that? I suppose it's hardware. This is the actual like physical alterations I want to make. And I've just put some cuts in so I can fit his wrists through where the zips are on his jacket. Um, I just thought this looks quite nice. I mean, we see him in the movie for most of his time just with his hands in his pockets. Uh, either they're in his pocket, or he's taking things and putting them into his pocket. So I thought it'd be quite nice to have him have that option. You can see here, you can kind of just finesse it around a little bit once you've done this. Uh, but I literally just cut down along the side uh, of the zip, and it opens up this whole option for you. You do obviously have a permanent gap there. Um, if you heat it up, it tends to almost like, not reseal itself, but you can't reseal the gap if you heat it up again. So unfortunately with this figure we did only get three hands, which is a bit of a shame because we saw obviously Miles and uh, Gwen come with uh, four hands I believe, so I don't know why we've got an odd number here. It would have been nice to at least get like two fists or something. So these are hands from other figures, I believe these ones from Silk, and these grey ones are from one of the Black Widow releases, and this custom piece is also from a Silk figure, um, not too sure. We'll find a use for this, like you can see it works kind of well uh, with him. I just had it spare and I thought it'd be fun to throw in. It also balances out the odd number of hands which was really irritating me for some reason. So painting wise, this is how I paint, I glue them to a stick. A tiny bit of super glue because then it's very easy to remove. Just standard Halford's white primer and that's then primed. Um, this is just some cheap acrylic I got from Hobbycraft. Uh, it tastes really bad, I wouldn't recommend putting it in your mouth. And then that's then painted, and then we've just got the little bits of blue on the back where I assume it's like ripped gloves from him. And that's just a basic pattern I've painted on that somewhat mimics his original one. And you can see I've done that to that hand as well. I also took the time to go and paint his guitar pick. Um, because it's meant to be black from what I remember in the movie. Uh, and I've also tried to paint the logo that's on the back of his jacket onto the pick, which you could kind of see there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just a basic modification. Um, you can see all of the bits where like he's got his leather straps. For whatever reason they didn't paint all the studs on, they painted some silver and left the rest black. But they painted the one silver that you can't really see because they're closer to his body, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So I'm just going to go and paint them myself. 
and I've not sped this up, I wanted you to see what kind of process this is. This is literally just dipping the very tip of the paintbrush in silver and then just gently touching the actual studs enough that it uh, takes some of the paint. Now also I'm not going to make you sit through this entire thing. Um, so like I've cut little bits out, oh like there, um, but I will show you bits like me painting the buckles which you can see here. Just showing you like how slow the process actually is. Um, and how careful we have to be. Again, this is one of the reasons I don't paint faces on camera, it's because it's very difficult to keep it in front of the camera while like and framed while getting a good view of it. Um, again, if you do want me to paint faces on camera, I will do a tutorial on how I paint um, realistic faces and cartoon faces. Just let me know in the comments and I'll show you how that's done. So I did also go and paint all the eyelets uh, throughout his boots. All of the ones, all like the silver studs on his belt, that was more just dry brushing to catch the tips. And then I've done his bracer and his armband. Uh, I didn't do the neck one because uh, the actual bit that's visible is painted this time. Uh, I just didn't finish the back of it off. I also went and painted all the silver areas on his guitar that should have been silver to begin with. As well as all the bits that didn't really need the detail but I just thought it would be quite fun anyway. A personal gripe of mine is that they'd never paint like the bottom of the shoes because I think it's such just like a small detail that works really well just to add some more depth. And you can see here, this is what it does. I forgot to record a section for it, so this is just a photo that I took uh, afterwards. But again, with his jacket, I didn't want to matte coat this or anything, but I did see some badges that weren't painted. So keeping with his style uh, and my beliefs, I've put the pride flag and the trans flag on there. Um, I've also obviously put my logo on there. And then I've just glossed these two badges and that'll do. I didn't prime or anything, obviously, because it mean repainting the whole jacket. Um, Next up, I'm just going to go and add like the black lines you see on him throughout like the movie because uh, he's got a very like drawn style to him. And then I'm going to varnish over it just to cover it. Uh, and I've varnished the hands as well. I overall wasn't too happy with the way the black lines came out. Uh, or wasn't to begin with. And then the more I looked at it, the more I was like, actually this matches the uh, movie. So I'm a little bit happier with it. You can see I also did some black line work on the guitar itself. And now we'll take a look at the actual line work I did on the figure. So you can see I've added like a couple random lines, a couple accents. Um, I've gone and smudged his uh, eyes, lenses, whatever you want to call them a little bit. Which you can see a bit here. I've gone and added some slight like line work around his head, just where you'd be blocking out character shapes. And obviously all over his boots, just outlining anywhere where there's a hard edge. And that's the figure itself done. Again, because I liked going that little extra bit, I went and cut out the yellow outline of his guitar, uh, which we see quite a bit throughout the movie, just out of some yellow card. And despite having done all this work, this is probably how the figure will be displayed. Uh, none of the hands that I've painted, none of the paintwork that I did on the front of the guitar, just this. Uh, this is how he'll be on my shelf. Um, but I'm actually very happy with how this came out, I think this is fairly accurate to the movie. Uh, obviously it's not perfect, uh, I struggled a bit with getting the correct artwork done for the the lines and the, the black areas and the shading, but overall I'm, I'm very happy with this, I think it's worked out quite nicely. I, that is another yellow card piece that I did as well. Um, again, very simple, just a rough sketch of the shape and I've cut out the scissors. Uh, I imagine that I don't need to explain that to you, but I, for whatever reason, just thought I'd explain it anyway. Uh, and you can see I've wedged it just where his thumb is and everything, there's no blue tack for this bit. There's not like a major difference to this figure from what I've done. I feel like just the odd little detail that Hasbro could have done would have made this figure a lot better. Like the actual black on his boots I think is... Like it was already such a vast change after I painted it, I feel like it was just such a small detail. And the same with all the silver. I feel like if they'd done the silver and the black on his boots, they could have got away with this figure being perfectly fine. Um, you can see I've not upped any of the articulation as well. This figure's articulation is fantastic. He can get in like a four point pose. Um, or at least a two point pose very easily. Uh, I didn't see any point in doing toe articulation on this guy either. Just because he's wearing boots. And while it may have been easier to get it on this figure. I didn't want to add it basically. I just didn't think it made sense for boots. Um, and I didn't want to edit the actual physical figure itself too much. I didn't want to change 
well, it's hard work, like I said. Um, I just want to change the paint job. So here you can see me trying to set up the thumbnail. <laughs> and it obviously doesn't go very well. Uh, there's a split second frame where I'm able to get a good photo. If you had more patience, you would be able to balance him on this hand. And you can see the gripping hands that I painted can hold his guitar quite nicely. But you know what, I'm very happy with this figure. Um, it's a shame he'll probably be displayed just in his neutral stance. But if you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, comment, subscribe. Do all the normal things. The channel's growing very nicely at the moment, and I really appreciate all your help towards that. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next video, which I think will probably be quite a short, a, a short one. A short one, because I'm on holiday. But thank you.